baby mama. <laughs> you already know though. Check it out. Hey, they wanna ask how long I'll be here. I say forever, let's just be clear. I'm gonna be loving you. trying to figure out the right song to play tonight. <laughs> okay. Hello. Good evening. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hello, wise, and good evening. I wanted to just welcome you with this song. God gave me this song at the last minute. Like, I was packing up for work. And I kept on hearing this song in my head, like, all of my life, all of my life, for the rest of my life. I'm like, what is this? And I was like, oh, this is song the Lord want me to use tonight for my life. What a duo, right? Hey. This is my jam. This is this is when uh, Coach T turned to a thug Christian. <laughs> Listen, let me turn this down. What's going on, my wife? What's going on? Listen, Coach T coming in tonight. I want to start off by saying this is one of these teachings that I'm going to just get straight to the point. I'm going to be very blunt, okay? Um because it is it, it is what it is like this is like i do not care <laughs> what's the little memes that they got on tiktok we do not care this is one of those kind of like lies where coach t do not care all right because it's a serious it's a serious lesson on this evening and so tonight's live i want to dedicate to the wise who has accepted their assignment as his wife okay and so we have come y'all we have come to the last thursday of this month um in our recovery series and tonight i want to talk to the chosen ones all right i want to talk to the chosen ones i've been coaching all day so i am tired so i don't want to hold you long either um the reasoning behind my bluntness has a lot to do with the oil that i carry um because i paid a price for it i paid a price for it and so i want to just get it out you know get the point across and move on all right so let's pray father god we bless you we love you jesus we give you all the praises glory and honor we thank you lord for your amazing grace and mercy thank you jesus for what you're doing on tonight for the lives that you're changing on tonight god we thank you lord for the wives who will be tuning in to this live and for the ones who will catch it later on replay lord lord i pray that you will penetrate the hearts of your wives on this evening god help us lord help us lord as you continue to renew our minds jesus renew the wife mind Help her, God, to do what it is that you have called her to do in this hour concerning her marriage and with her husband and her assignment as his wife. So I pray for all wives, God, that you would give them that supernatural power that they need to proceed on this journey. Lord, we love you in advance. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to change lives around. Forgive us, God, for our sins. Anything we have said, did, or done that has not been pleasing to you, Lord. And help wives to fall in alignment with the will and the calling that you have for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right? So listen, let's jump into it. I always try to come on here and be a little transparent with you up front and let you know, you know, you are not alone. You are not alone. <laughs> okay? My marriage, Coach T marriage, all right, has done everything to me but kill me and take me out. That's the only thing it has not did, all right? It has did everything to me. I have been stretched and bent in ways that you could not think imaginable, okay? Yet, yet, 
I feel obligated. I feel obligated to share about the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and to tell others about God's faithfulness. All right. I want to tell others about God's faithfulness. Hello, hello, hello. And so I thought I would get on tonight and share why. Okay. Why, why I am so, uh, 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 feel the need to want to share the goodness of, of Jesus and share the goodness of his faithfulness, even though you went through all type of hell in your own marriage. Why would you even have the desire to want to share and talk about Jesus? All right. And the answer to that question is because I was chosen. Okay. Because I was chosen for this assignment and wife, I want to help you tonight to unravel and see if you have been chosen for this assignment too. All right. So, I want to share with you briefly about a young lady who was minding her own business. She was minding her own business, okay, and preparing for her wedding day when the Lord sent a messenger, an angel to her, all right? And let's read her story a little bit, just a little bit, out of Luke chapter 1, verses 28 to 38, all right? This would be a good time like, for you to take notes, to write down some stuff, to jot down some things because I'm going to give you a lot of information on tonight. This will also be a, a good message for you to go back and look at and review for a later time. All right. So Luke 1 chapter 28 verses, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 1 verses 28, 38 says, Gabriel, Gabriel, which is an angel, appeared to her and said, greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Mary confused and disturbed trying to think about what the angel could have meant don't be afraid mary the angel told her for you have found favor with god you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him jesus he will be very great and he will be called the son of the most high the lord god will give him the throne of his, of his ancestor david and he will reign over israel forever his kingdom will never end the angel did reply and said, the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mary asked the angel then, but how can this happen and I'm a virgin? How, how can this be? How can, I, how can I be having a child and I'm, and I'm a virgin? And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your, what's, what's even more, the angel was telling Mary, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and now it's in her sixth month. For the word of God would never fail, aka nothing is impossible with God. All right. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. And God's word is already blessed. All right. So let's go back to your wedding day. All right. We're gonna go, we're gonna take a little, you know, a little journey down memory lane. Let's go back to your wedding day. Better yet, let's go back to the day that your husband proposed to you. Let's go back to the day that your husband made a decision to say, Hey, I want this person to be my wife. He came to you, he got down on one knee, he asked you to be his wife. Let's go back to that day. Do you remember? Do you remember where you was at? Do you remember what's taking place? Do you remember the thoughts and the and the things that was running through your mind? Do you remember the 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 dreams that you had? Did you remember the the aspirations and the and the goals and the and the plans that you were planning or planning? Do you remember all these great and wonderful feelings and you know all these different wounds and moons and oohs and all that kind of butterfly stuff? Do you remember when your husband first came to you and asked you to be his wife? All right. Would you ever have thought in a million years on the day he asked you to be his wife, you would be carrying the load you are carrying today? Did you imagine anything but perfect being your story? Because, because this is the day you have been waiting for, right? This is the day right here you have been waiting to say I do. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, at a, in the middle of all those, you know, all those, those feelings, those, oh my God, those, this is my time. I'm going to be a wife, hashtag wifey, hashtag, you know, I'm his, whatever. You finally get to this place and then you have an angel come and visit you. <laughs> you have an angel come and visit you, right? 
just before it's time for you to say I do, just before you get ready to, you know, cross that threshold, just be, just before you get ready to, you know, lean in to, you know, to kiss your husband, just before you get all that, the angel's like, mm, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> before you do all that, let me, let me just put this in. Let me just share this with you. All right. Um, you know, your angel, if, if, if you chose right, okay, let me just, let me just, let me just pop my collar a little bit. If you chose right, your angel is that, is that web efficient. Your angel is that facilitator. Your angel is that one who you had premarital guidance with, all right? The angel was the one who came to you and told you, listen, let me tell you what's about to go down before you say I do, okay? Let me tell you what's about to go down. And so they go over the wedding vows with you. It goes something like this. Do you take this person to be your awfully wedded husband slash wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death do us part according to God's ordinance? Do you, you remember something like that? When they went over those vows with you in detail and tried to explain to you what you're getting ready to walk yourself into and what's getting ready to take place. You remember? You remember? A lot of people don't remember. I like sometimes like just go over the wedding vows every now and again just to share with my wives and remind them you took a vow. You made an oath. Okay? And I know when you in that moment, you caught up in those moments, whatever, you don't really think about that really. But you made a vow to love your husband through all of this, okay? And now your life began. You, oh, yes, 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 I'm gonna do it. Yes, 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 I do. Yes, 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 I'm gonna go along with it. Yes, yes, yes. Full of dreams, full of hopes, full of expectations. And then the assignment begins. <laughs> and then the assignment begins, honey. And depending on where you are individually and or as a couple will determine how your assignment goes. Because a lot of times people don't understand when you sign up for this role called marriage, you're not just getting married. You are actually signing up for an assignment, okay? You are actually signing up for an assignment. And so you are given an assignment depending on where you are and how God wants to strengthen you and grow you up and mature you. This is where we're going to talk about a little bit, okay? This is what we're going to get a little deeper into, okay? So, I tell wives and couples all the time, marriage exposes the errors that you never dealt with. Marriage exposes those things that are hidden away, that's tucked away, that's swept up underneath the, um, underneath the rug. Marriage gets the, the, the attention of what needs to be addressed, what you need to work on. This is what marriage does, okay? And now God is all about helping you to get to that place. He is all about strengthening you, maturing you, getting you better, making you whole, making you look more like his son, Jesus, okay? And so usually, depending, it just depends on, you know, what your story is because everybody's story is different. Everybody, you know, everybody walk is different. It depends, but God, he's about to take you, wife, on this ride called his wife, all right? And so you notice the Bible said an angel came to Mary and not the enemy. Because a lot of people automatically assume that when their marriage started to go rocky or when things start to get shaky in their marriage, it automatically is the enemy's fault. But sometimes, a lot of time, most of the time, God orchestrated our steps and he ushered us into certain things. And so sometimes he will send even an angel to prepare you for the foolery that's getting ready to take place, but it's always for a good cause, okay? God was intentional about who he chose for this assignment. I'm going back to the story of Mary now. He was intentional about who he chose for this assignment, all right? So let's re let's reread this part in the verse in Luke chapter 1, verses 28b. When the angel came to her, Gabrielle, saying, Greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Greetings, favorite woman. God specifically chose Mary for this assignment. Listen, he could have chose anyone, anyone to be Jesus, it, to be Jesus' mother. Okay? But he specifically, he specifically chose Mary for this assignment. All right? The near fact that he chose her tells us a few things about her. And I want to kind of like go over this. I want to kind of go over this a little bit. All right? First, Mary had to be a woman of God. 
Okay, she she had to be a woman of God. Okay, I mean God, He had His eyes on her. He had been watching her. He had been looking at her. He had been you know journeying with her. He knew her story. He knew her walk. He knew where she came from. She had to be a woman of God. Okay, she had to honor God. All right. Secondly, she had to have known what the Bible says about you know about His word. She had to know what the Bible said about um about His word because she was not surprised to be talking to one of God's angels. And she was very, very familiar with the terminology he was using. She even responded back by saying, I'm the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. She was already familiar with God's word. She was already familiar with, with know what the Bible says, okay? And lastly, thirdly, something about her was different, right? Something about Mary was different. She stood out in a way that no other woman stood out, okay? And so she was chosen, y'all. She was chosen to be Jesus' mother. And you got to understand, that's a big deal. When God sends his angel to you to give you specific instructions on what he wants to come about, you got to understand, this is a big deal. It's not just like, so, oh, okay, no, 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 no. This is a big deal, okay? This is a big deal. When God chooses a wife to carry this type of, to carry this type of, of cross you have to understand at the door your life is no longer your own okay let's get to the hard stuff now all right your life is no longer your own matthew 10 and 39 says if you cling to your life you will lose it but if you give up your life for me you will find it how y'all doing with that Just that part right there. How y'all doing with that? If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, then you will find it. How y'all doing with that? How that's working out for you? Okay. The first thing you need to understand about being his wife is you give up the right to do things your way. You give up the right to doing things your way. You release your will and you follow through with God's will for your life and what he has for you to do in your marriage, all right? That's first, all right? Holy is your new description, okay? Holy, not perfect, it's a difference, okay? Holy is your new description. And Colossians 3 and 12 says, you are God's chosen people. That's what I wrote, chosen again, right? You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So pick on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. How y'all doing with that? <laughs> How y'all doing with that, wise? Okay. I had to make sure I had my cup tonight because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of sipping. Okay. <laughs> doing with that okay not only do you have to give up your life okay now you gotta walk a certain way you have to hold yourself together a certain kind of way okay holy is your new description okay next love unconditional love is your new language all right unconditional love is your new language the bible says in first corinthians 13 4 to 8 which is you know the love chapter love is patient love is kind it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. How y'all doing with love? How y'all doing with this love wall, okay? Because this is one of the requirements of being his wife, all right? You give up your life. You're no longer your own. You don't have your own life. You no longer have, you know, have that. Your new description is holy. Your new description is holy. And now you have to show unconditional love, all right? Number four, lastly, you are sacrificial. You are sacrificial. You are daily making a you are daily making a conscious decision to lay your life down for your 
husband. John 15 and 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one life for one's friend. How y'all doing with that? <laughs> lay down my life? What you mean, lay down my life? What you what you mean? How y'all how y'all doing with that? Hmm? How that's working out for y'all? All right. So I hear you. I hear you. You may be asking, you know, who would do something like this? Like who who does this type of foolery? <laughs> like who who gonna do that kind of stuff, Coach T? Who does that? My response, Jesus. Because that's, that's what Jesus did for us, right? Is God asking you to be Jesus? Absolutely not. We could never. We could never. But he is asking you to model Jesus to your lost husband. He is asking you to give up. Don't give up on him like, like some of the, the, the other people in his life have or like the world has. Okay? He is asking you to demonstrate the church to him. Wait, 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 wait. That sounds familiar. Demonstrate the church to him. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians and 5. When it says, and so wives must submit completely to their husbands just as a church submits itself to Christ. Oh, so you want me to do what you had already told me to do. <laughs> That's all he's saying. You just want me to do what you had already told me to do originally, right? Okay, God's giving you a picture of a complete circle. He's giving you a picture of a complete circle. He wants you to demonstrate the church in action to your dying husband, which is dying spiritually. We're going to be saying spiritually, okay? He wants you to demonstrate the church to him in action. Just as we, the church, are supposed to demonstrate Christ to the dying world, God is saying, I need you to demonstrate Christ to your dying husband who is dying spiritually. How y'all doing with that, wives? How y'all doing with that? Okay? Wife, God's asking you to do something that you are supposed to be already doing. When you sign up to say, I do, when you went to that altar, on the day you said, I do to your husband, that is what the requirement. If you go back and read Ephesians 5, uh, 22 to 33 ish, it talks about the roles of a husband and a wife. And if you read your role in their wife, the things that we just went over, this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. Why not be that person for your husband? Why not demonstrate and show your husband Christ? Why not? Why let his soul go to go to go to hell when it was something that you could have done to intervene on his behalf because let's go back to your vows what your what your vows said to to have and to hold from this day forward for better or worse for richer for poor in sickness and in health to love and to cherish to death do us part hmm why send him to hell and you and you got it together they don't they don't go why why send him straight down to the pits and, and, and you going somewhere else. That don't go. God is asking you to show your husband him. He's asking you to show your husband Christ. Okay? Now, I want to go over how do you know if you have been chosen for this assignment. All right? And I want to kind of like give you, you know, a couple little things that you can kind of like, you know, kind of like, you know, go over and, and see. But at the, at the end of the day, the main thing for you to really do concerning if you're supposed to be his wife, if you're supposed to be doing this assignment, go to God in prayer. I always tell my wife, go do a 30-day fast, go and pray. God is going to respond. Go do a 30-day a fast, God will respond. Hey, hey, hey. All right? And so let me give you a few things that you can begin doing as you or, or some things you can start thinking about um to know and determine whether or not you are supposed to be his wife okay number one how do you know if you have been called to this assignment one god chose you okay god chose you and he shared slash gave you specific instructions about your role as his wife perfect example god said okay look I know he done did this. I know he did that to you. I know he running the streets. I know he been drinking. I know he done cheated. I know he can't make up his mind whether he want to stay or he want to go. But as his wife, I'm asking you to stay and stand, 
stay, I'm asking you to stay in that relationship. I'm asking you to stay in that marriage, okay? I'm asking you to pray for your husband and pray him through this. I'm asking you to turn the other cheek. I'm asking you to be the bigger person. I'm asking you to not hold it against him. I'm asking you to extend mercy and grace. I'm asking for you to be his wife. This is what God is saying, okay? So that's how you know. That's the first one, all right? Second one. Something in you just can't shake the feeling of moving on. And divorcing your husband, okay? You feel really, really, really bad about it. It won't settle no matter how many times you, you know, you said you're done. Like, you can be, like, so mad, like, I'm done. Like, this is it. This is a final straw. Like, I ain't doing this no more. I'm finished, all right? And then all of a sudden, you know, you know what? I've been feeling like God been talking to me. <laughs> you know what? I've been, I've been feeling a little different about this thing. I, I, don't, I don't think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So, you know, you can tell... It's a feeling that comes on you that you just cannot shake it. You just cannot shake it. No matter how much you want to, you just cannot shake it, okay? Next, you feel the urge to pray for him frequently, right? You feel the urge to pray for your husband frequently. God puts him in your spirit a lot. He gives you dreams, visions of him. Even if you haven't spoken to him or seen him for a long time or heard from him, you have these, you know, you have these, 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 these dreams and these visions and, you know, he, he, you know, he, it's like he's, he's in your spirit, like you carrying him and you are because you guys are united in the spirit. So you are carrying him in your spirit. Okay. But something about this is he's, it's heavy. It's really heavy and you, and, and, and you can't shake it. Okay. The next thing you cannot divorce him because something always comes up or stops you in your tracks. Something always come in between of you getting to that place, getting back to that courthouse, getting to that to them to them papers. Something happens and holds you up from divorcing him. It like it don't happen. Like I'm gonna do it, okay? I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna do it this time. I'm for real. I'm so serious. I ain't gonna do it. Something keeps happening. Something stops you in your tracks, okay? Next. Anytime you think of doing opposite of what God says, <laughs> anytime you think of doing opposite of what God says and you do wrong, you are fully convicted, all right? And so this is like dating other people, you know, talking to another guy, you know, you know, being interested in somebody else, like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm going to start dating. Or I'm going to start, you know, going out. I'm going to just, you know, find me a little friend and talk to until God figure this thing out for me or whatever. When you start having those type of moments that come up or whatever, and you do that, you do those things, and you're like, oh, my God, I feel like I done did something wrong. Because you have. <laughs> Excuse me, because you have. All right? That's an indicator that you are supposed to be his wife. Okay? You desire to know slash learn more about your role and your assignment as a standing wife. But, but. I want to challenge you to take the standing wife title down today, okay? I want to challenge you to take the standing wife challenge, to take the standing wife title down. No more are you a standing wife, okay? No more are you a standing wife. Let's change that title to being a obedient wife, okay? You are being a obedient wife. Your desire to obey God has, your desire to obey God is what is keeping you going for your marriage. Your desire to do the right thing by God is what's keeping you, okay? Take off the standing wife part and, and, and switch it to being a obedient wife, all right? You desire to learn more. You desire, you know, you want, you want to get more information on that. You're curious to see if you can get any help. You want to know if there's anything else that you can do. You want to know if there's anything that you can, you know, um, any type of other aisles you can go down. You're like, what are your options? Like, what you should do? You're kind of confused. You're not really sure about which way to go on this thing. If that could be an indicator that you were supposed to be his wife. All right? And then last but certainly not least, God has graced you with supernatural strength that doesn't seem normal. Okay, he has graced you with supernatural strength that does not seem normal, and so you withstand and you will you withstand and can face anything. Okay, Cer certain things that will probably bother a, uh, another wife or uh, maybe get underneath that wife's skin, it's like water off your back, you know. Certain things that probably used to have bothered you before or in, you know, in the past, it's like psh, I'm over that, I don't got you know, I got past that part or whatever, okay. You have a certain type of grace. You have a, a certain type of strength. You have a certain kind of demeanor about yourself. You have a certain kind of glow. It's a glory that you are carrying because God is helping you on this journey, all right? That could be an indicator that you are his wife. Listen, let me just go back to the story of Mary. No, we didn't read this part. No, we didn't read this part. But when you get time, when you get time, go back and finish reading the rest of the Mary story. 
we didn't talk about the story we didn't talk about the part of her husband joseph we didn't talk about you know her the different things that they went through but this lady was carrying an assignment that was given to her by an angel okay now she's big and pregnant now joseph done got word and got news that you gotta get this lady out of town because they're trying to come for her they want to come and take jesus they want to take and kill this baby okay they done came for her they want to come for her now so now this lady has to go out of town she had to go through all these different hurdles just to get her child to safety right so now your wife god has given you this assignment god has given you this assignment and you have no idea you have no idea the challenges that you're getting ready to face you have no idea the things you're getting ready to have to go through but god said i got you if i told you if i came to you if i sent a word to you if i give you message about what you're supposed to be doing Best believe I am going to see these things to pass. Why? You have been chosen. You have been chosen to be his wife. You have been chosen to be his wife. And if God has given you specific instructions on what you're supposed to do concerning your marital covenant, listen, I want to encourage you to do those things, okay? I want to encourage you to do those things. This is not about willpower. Let me just put that part out there, <laughs> okay? This is not about willpower, okay? This assignment is not about willpower. And because you will know, you will know, you will know in due time, if you can do this in your own strength or you will need God to help you with this, okay? It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's so crazy because I sometimes get like, you know, you know, sometimes like younger wise, not necessarily young in age, but like maturity wise, who they have no idea what they're coming up against. They just think that, oh, it's going to be la, 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 la. Oh, yeah, I'm going to save my husband. I'm going to save my husband. And they have no idea what they're going to get ready and face and the challenges. It's like, are you supposed to be doing this? Or is it something that God has specifically told you to do? Are you doing this in your own strength? Or are you actually yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to help you? Because it is going to show you will break, okay? You will break. Um, Ecclesiastes 9 11 talks about the race is not given to the swift or to the strongest, but to the one who endures to the end. Come on, Jesus. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. You will know if you're supposed to be his wife or not. Okay, you would know. So I want to just encourage you guys. I want to encourage you. If you're not certain of your assignment, if you're not certain this is something that you're supposed to do, I want to encourage you to sign up for your heart buoyancy boots. Okay, sign up for your heart buoyancy boots. I want to be able to help you and walk with you on your journey and to help you be able to get clarification on whether or not you're supposed to be on this journey or not. I want to be able to help you walk through some of these foundational steps that you need to walk through in order for you to get through these first the first stage because like i said it's levels to this okay it's i've been saying that for the last few weeks it's levels to this and so i want to be able to help you with that first part the foundational the, the steps the, ba the basic part because too many wives are trying to skip steps and when you skip se steps you make your standing process harder longer inconvenient you do you do all these things and you have no idea the steps that you're skipping out is it plays a big big role in your ending part okay we go from glory to glory to glory to glory and god is saying this part as his wife is just the beginning stage i have so much more work for you to do i have so much more work for you to do so i want to encourage you guys if you have not already sign up sign up for your free 30-minute session i give you a free 30-minute coaching session just to hear you out just to, you know answer some of your questions just to kind of know where you are to see if i'm gonna be a good fit for you if i'll be a good coach for you Heck, I be want to talk to you just so I can know whether or not we can continue on this journey together. I can tell just from the conversation that we having whether or not this is a go or this is probably not a go type of thing, all right? I want to encourage you to sign up for your free 30-minute session at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Start your work. Begin doing your work today, all right? Begin, begin doing your work so you can get to the place that God wants you to be. Have you been chosen for this role? Have you been chosen for this role? If you're not sure, I want to encourage you to sign up, all right? So listen, like I shared with you on last week, I am going to ship. I am going to be shipping, shipping, shifting <laughs> um, to my marriage page on next Thursday. On next Thursday, I'll be shifting over there, but I will still be coming on here with you guys and um, showing up on Saturdays. But you can always join me on my marriage page because God has me going to my marriages, talking to my couples for the next 30 days, all right? And so definitely um, it's buoyancy wedding efficient. I think, I think that's what it is. 
Mm-hmm. Barney T. Wedding and Fishing. So you can always ship over there or um to, to the other page and join me on Thursday nights. I'll be over there, all right? I hope this series has been a help to you. I hope you were, were able to receive anything, you know, receive something from this. And listen, why sign up and do your work. Don't skip the steps. Sign up and do your work, all right? I want to encourage you to sign up today. Hey, 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 I see you. I see you, Miss Lady. <laughs> All right, listen, I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy the rest of your week. Blessings.